Hi, this is Adam, the Small Town Machine Shop. It's Sunday. So I went to the flea market. Uh, yeah, just the flea market. And picked up some stuff off Craigslist I'll show you today. Uh, sorry that I'm in a lot of shop videos. Newborn baby, you know, been busy. But it'll be a video tomorrow. I'll be making that rack above the welders and some other stuff. So I'm back in the shop now. Uh, so yeah. So let's see what we got today. First, if you didn't see my short from yesterday... I got this uh, late 70s, 240 volt uh, Sears stick welder for free on an ad. And also came with some big lead, about uh, 30 feet of each. There's another stinger, another ground clamp. This is probably the original stinger, the ground clamp. So nice little compact type machine. It's got the dual range there. I uh, crudely power hooked it up, and it does work. So for how small that machine is, I mean, the duty cycle's awful on it. But I like sear stuff, so I'll probably let the uh, my oldest boy play around with this for a while. And then I'll give it to someone who uh, is just starting out. There's the power adjust. And the same guy, for free, this old vintage Porta Power. And one ram. And it does work. It was set up with all kinds of uh, bars for uh, spreading stuff. So that's through most of that in the scrap bin. But the ram was cool. And the pump was cool because I turned my other Porta Power ram into a high pressure oiler. It's this, it was that old orange Porta Power set that everyone has. Uh, they make great oilers for machines. Then, Cool stuff in here. This was 15, 40 bucks for everything in here. And there's some awesome stuff. Very few items, but very cool. This is, if you want to find cool stuff at flea markets, you have to be persistent. You have to go a lot. And then the people, when they see you, they kind of see what you're buying and they'll set stuff aside for you or they'll just ask you, you know, what kind of stuff you're looking for. And that happened in two cases today. Uh, I went there today, and two guys had stuff set aside for me. And let's check this out. First of all, got this Mitutoyo 24-inch uh, dial caliper. The crystal is bad. It needs a little bit of work up here. It's missing the two screws. A little set screws that hold that brass part in. But it does turn nice and smooth. I checked it with some gauge blocks, and once that's secured and it doesn't weeble wobble, uh, that'd be an awesome addition. Uh, this was five dollars. So that there. Then this is a really cool one. This is a Fowler again. Crystal's bad. Checked it with the old uh, calibration data. 08 <laughs> again checked it with the gauge blocks uh one inch out to four inch and it is accurate so that was cool needs a little cleaning and some oiling does turn smooth get over here and that 24 inch that was ten dollars i did not have a caliper that big so i didn't have a real accurate way to measure something that size. Sorry for a little shakiness. We're going in hell today because we are down on the floor. <laughs> Next thing, wire brush. I always buy at yard sales, flea markets, everything, all the wire brushes and scrapers because, you know, that was a dollar. I was thrown into, paid 15 for this stuff and yeah, 25 for all the rest of the stuff you're going to see. Klein nut driver. Blue. I don't have a lot of metric wrenches, so it's good shape. Blue point. That was in a dollar wrench bin. That was in a dollar screwdriver bin. And here's the three cool things. Well, at least I think they're cool. And if you do work out in the field with flanges and stuff. 
There's a nice wrench there. This is a Rue Dog, inch and seven sixteenths. Good shape. Blunted tip. Most of them will have blunted tips. If you use these a lot, you know, I blunt some of the ones I have. But awesome. I call them the spud wrench. I'm sure they have other names. But these are expensive when you buy them new. They're also called construction wrenches. I have a bunch of them. And I have a ratchet and I think a crest wrench. Here's another one. This is a Klein, I believe. Uh, Klein makes a lot of these. Or uh, I don't know if Klein makes them. Yeah, Klein right there. This is a three-quarter. That's a very nice size. Um, inch and a half head. You know, that part's inch and a half. Very cool. Again, these things are expensive. And I do a lot of flange alignment stuff. And those things are invaluable. And you can put a cheater bar on these things. I mean, these things are indestructible. And what I like about them, too, is you stick them in the ground next to you while you're working. Then, this is the thing I was most excited about. Um, what I use this for is driving. Two flanges are misaligned. You put this in there and you wail on it with a hammer. You get it to where you can get the bolts in. And then the next time I do this, I'll take you guys with me. If you have to drive a flange that much together, you take a rosebud on a torch and you heat the metal so it relaxes. And you never, ever put a pump under strain like that, you know, because of the casting and stuff. This is like downstream, you're retro, retrofitting a valve into a couple spool pieces. But that thing is just cool. And will come in handy. And this is a Klein too. Flange spike, flange wedge. They go by a million different names. So there we go. 40 bucks for all that. Super cool. Free and free. So nice little haul today. Didn't have a lot of time, but had some cool stuff. Again, get to know your people at your flea markets and swap meets. Uh, you know, they set that side of stuff for me. And that's most appreciated. This is Adam from Small Time Machine Shop. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.